Hey everyone, Carl here with Trialbyte Studios, and last Wednesday, the Trialbyte Studios team wanted to try something new. After talking it over with the rest of the team, we decided to do a series of species profiles called Trilobites. These videos are meant to be small, bite-sized, informative videos, highlighting any animal that we here at Trilobite Studios find fascinating. Episode 1 was the Tyrant of Madagascar, Majungasaurus. So if you haven't seen that one, please go watch it after enjoying this episode focusing on... Jurassic Park Dilophosaurus. Covered in Arizona in 1940 on the Cayenta Formation of Navajo County by Jesse Williams, Dilophosaurus would have lived in a dry environment with towering sand dunes around the edges of lush oases. In this unique habitat, Dilophosaurus was for the time the largest carnivore in the area. Dilophosaurus dominated its habitat until 183 million years ago when it went extinct. It wouldn't be until engine scientists came along in the early 1990s that Dilophosaurus would live again. I'd like to add that the Jurassic Park Dilo isn't a true Dilophosaurus. It's actually a Cynosaurus. In 1993, this new animal was once thought to be another species of the Dilophosaurus from Asia. Since InGen wasn't worried about describing the species when creating it, this led to the Jurassic Park animal we all know and love as the Jurassic Park Dilophosaurus. Originally, InGen used mosquitoes trapped in amber to extract the DNA to create Dilophosaurus. But since the oldest known mosquitoes only date to the late Cretaceous period, it's unknown how Dr. Henry Wu managed to pull off this miracle. My guess is that Dr. Wu used the Loy antibody extraction technique. This technique worked by grinding up bones to look for and extract DNA fragments. However, like many other engine animals, Dr. Wu was only able to obtain 75% of the Dilophosaurus's entire genome. Because of this, he needed to find something else to fill in the missing DNA sequence. Dr. Wu chose to use a number of DNA samples to try and fix the broken prehistoric genomes, and they all failed. Even the addition of frilled lizard DNA didn't produce a living animal. It wasn't until the middle of 1991 that Dr. Wu found his answer. By adding the yellow banded poison dart frog to the genetic structures to stabilize the DNA and create the Jurassic Park Dilophosaurus. However, this mixing of genes had unforeseen consequences. These Dilophosaurus had a box-shaped head as well as a frill both of which are not shown in the fossil record for this animal. Then, InGen's animal handlers made a horrifying discovery. The Jurassic Park Dilophosaurus had venom. The handlers observed juvenile Dilophosaurus biting rats, then stepping back to wait for the rat to die. It wasn't until much later, and to everyone's shock, that the handlers discovered that these Dilos could spit their venom. The handlers only discovered that feature when one of their colleagues was nearly blinded. At this new discovery, InGen scientists began to study their Dilophosaurus much more intensely. In early 1993, five juvenile Dilophosaurus were transported from Isla Sorna to Isla Nubar to become one of Jurassic Park's first animal attractions. And the rest, well, that's film history. I hope you enjoyed this brief look into the fantastic animal that is the Jurassic Park Dilophosaurus.